this recording. Over to you, Tim. I'll let, I'll let people come in as they come. Right, thanks for having me, everybody, again. Um, I'm only going to do uh, six or seven flies because I feel terrible. So I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to tie a couple of spiders first. I've been tying a few spiders up, so I'm going to tie them first. That's four times you've said terrible since I've been on. Oh, no. One second, one second. Right, you ready? Yeah, I'm gonna, you carry on. This is a size 16 spider hook partridge. And it's um, a little black, it's called. And it's purple gossamer silk to start off. And we leave a long piece as well for the tap, uh, the rib as well. Do you want to switch cameras, Tim? One sec. There you go. Perfect. Right. So I've got a long tag because that'll be my rib as well. I start at the eye and touching turns, take my silk down to the barb of the hook. This is a 16, I say. One more there. So then we've got our, we'll keep our rib there out of the way a bit. The next is uh, a magpie centre tail. That's going to be our uh, hurl. And I'll take, because they're only fine, I'll take three hurls. And we'll tie them in. And then bring your silk back up, touching turns. And you just want to be a couple of mil away from the eye. There. Yeah. Ackle pliers. Hurl. And then wind your hurl on, touching turns up towards the eye. <coughs> and if you tie it in the right way, the blue of the magpie tail will be facing out towards you, the good, what I call the good side. And then we'll tie in with two wraps, cut your waist off. Move that out of the way. And then I'll get my silk, which I've left as a tag for my rib, and I'll put two full turns at the back of the hook before I start, and then open turns. Rib your magpie oil. Up. One. Two. And then just cut your silk off. The next, for the legs, I'm going to use a, a starling skin. I'm going to use the feather off the back of the starling. And I picked a feather. Pull all your waist off. And then what I do, I'll get me, I've got a small pair of ackle pliers. I'll put on the tip of the, the tip of the feather like 
Can you see that? So I've got it like that. And then I'll stroke back the fibers that I'm going to use. And you don't need many because you only need a turn, turn and a half. So then I've got that, the legs are in my fingers now. So I'll get my scissors and I cut. So it leaves me with a little triangle. Hold him there. One, two, three. And we end up like that. Get your ankle pliers again. You just have to be a bit gentle because they're not the strongest of feathers. Then stroke your feathers back. And then we get one. And that's that. And then tie your a couple of turns to all that. Bring in your scissors. I always put my finger, if you notice, behind. So that I'm pushing the thread away from me, me, me fly. And then I'm not going to cut the thread. Come in and cut your, your stalk. And there's your legs. Then a small picture gone off. Oh. Now you're all good here, Tim. It's fine. That's all right. It went, yeah, it went blank then. A bit of varnish on your thread. Whip finish. One, two, three. And if you notice, when I tie everything and I only use a few wraps, so you're not building the body and the head up and the so you only want two wraps to hold your, your magpie earl, two wraps to hold your Also that and there that's from that angle. Can you see that? Perfect. And you only want you only want you don't put too many legs on. And that's a little a little black in a size 16. You can tie it in a 14. 16, 18. Any questions? Yeah, on use, the top dropper, Tim. I, I use that on the top or middle drop here. Yeah. yeah. And I'd, I'd put 90% of the time on the point I'll put a tiny little nymph with a bead on. Yeah, like yeah. A one and a half or two mil. Sometimes I will. Is your second fly weighted as well then, Tim? No, on the, on the other points, and then I'll put that on the dropper, on the, yeah. on the first dropper, and then top dropper, I'll put another one on. Only the point fly, I'll put... Another weight. spider or something else. Yeah, another spider on the on yeah, yeah. two spiders and, and a and a nymph, yeah. Yeah. Very underestimated the spider, Tim, isn't he? Oh yeah. For a little thing, you do a lot of damage. <laughs> in the right in the right water. Yes, yeah. It works really well in the right water. And for grailing as well. Oh yeah, yeah. I use um 
a little f unweighted pheasant tail a lot on the middle these days. Yeah. Spider on the top. On the top, yeah. Right. The next one is the uh, dark Spanish needle. And I love this frog. It's beautiful. It's orange silk. Peacock Earl. And I use, the Earl I use is out the, out the eye because it's finer. And then a snipe feather, breast feather. And they're simple to tie as well. They take seconds to tie. Seconds. What hook is it, Tim? Uh, partridge, uh, spider hook, and it's a 14. And you can tie this 14, 16, 18 as well. So we start at the eye with the orange thread. Touching turns. Cut your waist. I think the hardest thing to use for silks is finding a good bobbin. Yeah. And just take your time and just go down slowly. And I go to the barb again and then back up. To about there. You need a breast, a feather off the breast this time. The breast of a snipe. Do the same again. Clean your waist off the bottom. Put your ankle pliers on. And then just throw enough so you end up like that. And same again, cut your your waist off to a little V. It takes a bit of practice to tie the tie them in, but you'll get there. And then one, two. I knew that was gonna happen. One, two, three. Bear with me. This thread's old and it's been well, not old, but it's been wound on a wooden bobbin, and I wound somebody's wound it on, wound it on, and then it's come to an end. We'll get there. Just cut your waist off carefully. Right, get your ankle pliers again. And just be careful with these because they're very, very fine, the feathers, the stalks. Stroke back. One. And that's enough there. One full turn. Bring your silk up. Over. Over. Uh, 
cut your waste off. These are uh, peacock eye. It's these that you want. These are the, the better quality ones. So you break one off. Take the end off because that will break anyway. And then at the front of the legs now, in between the legs and the eye, We'll tie that. And then one turn, two, three. Don't worry about the legs facing back at the moment. And then tie off your peacock curl. your waist up. And then a bit of varnish. One, two, three. Tighten it up. And we got away with that without a bob and older. <laughs> well saved, Tim. Aye. Uh -huh. Well saved, mate. We'll see. And then I'll just get a needle and just stroke it. Just pull your legs back a little bit forward. And that's on it just for show, nothing else. When it's fishing, it'll float, it'll fold back anyway. And it probably doesn't do it justice on the camera, but that's a lovely flight. Can you all see that? Yep. I've been tying these all week. I've been tying spiders all week, and all I am for is to take for Stevie Mum. <laughs> so that's any questions about that one? We all, we, none of us fish spiders like we should. And like Adam said earlier, they're underestimated. Derek, you're not coughing tonight. What's the matter? I put myself on mute. Next fly. I'm going to move a bit of this out of the way. How's your hand, Brett? Oh, it's okay. Thank you. I've got three weeks to go on a cast. So. Right, this one is a, a needle fly. I've used most, I've used a lot in Boston. I've used it here to caught me fish even when 
you shouldn't be catching fish on either side where he's ass caught with fish. This is a dry fly supreme size 16, olive thread. We've got a peacock hurl, which I've rubbed off with a rubber. So it's just the hurl itself. That is a capercaillie feather. And we've got CBC. So we'll start the back of the eye. Tie your thread in. It's a simple. So now we've got a peacock out, which has been rubbed off. So we've just got the quill itself. Tie him in by the tip and take it down to the bend of the hook. And we'll come back up with the thread. Stop there. I've got a little bit of super glue. On the back. And then wind your hurl. Your quill up, touching turns. To about two mil, three mil from the eye. Tie it off. Cut your waist off. This is um, snowshoe rabbit foot, nature spirit. It's very fine. And you, you do literally need the tiniest, tiniest bit. And you can see how much I put on there is nothing. Slide him up. And just build yourself a little ball, like so. A capercaillie feather. We need one. One hurl. We've got our hurl, yeah. And the peat where you've cut it off the stalk, you want facing the back of the hook. Lay them on the top, pinch, and pinch and loop. So you'll see that there. Can you all see that? How it's sat on the top and it's kicked up with a bump. Cut the waste off. And then just take your scissors. Push down and the wing will drop down a bit there. And that's just the wing cases there. Next, CDC.
I'll grab you want two two feathers one on top of the other Get your clip. Put like that. Yeah. And then cut your stalk out. So you end up like so. And then... If you run your needle down your thread, it will flatten it out and it's easy to split. Like so, put your finger in, get your clip, put your clip in. If there's too much, or I think there's too much, I'll pull some out before I start spinning. Any long ones? I'll pull the long ones out. I'll trim them anyway in a minute. Yeah. And then just spin your thread. And that locks your CDC in there. The CDC is locked in. And then start where the wing, where you've tied your wing in. When you, you start, pull all your fibres back as you tighten. Just keep pulling them back. And you'll, you'll get to the eye. A bit of varnish. Whip finish. And just pull your thread down to it anymore. Cut that off. Right now you can see how it's all underneath, on top, down the sides. I get my scissors and I cut the everything off underneath. And I do this with quite nearly all my flies that I trim underneath. They just sit better in the water. And then if there's any long, just tidy it up. And there, that's my needle fly, what I use, and I've used that here yeah, and Bosnia a lot. It sits on the water, it looks like nothing, but it sits on the water nice, floats nice. And that's all I use as a needle fly. Has it got a name, Tim? Yeah, needle fly. <laughs> needle. <laughs> I wasn't listening. <laughs> I'll oh, shut up now. <laughs> no, it's a needle fly piece. Yeah. Yeah. You can try that. I've tried it on a 14, but you try it on a 16, I would. Or 14, 16s. 
Jim. It, yeah. <clears throat> Do you reckon the needle flies actually hatch out of the water or do they come to the edge and then hatch at the side? I couldn't answer that, mate. I, I, personally, I think they come on the side. I don't think they're in the water. I'll tell you why I'm asking. Where you were going on Saturday. Yeah. Um, the week before the big water push last weekend. Yeah. Um, there was loads and loads of uh, needle fly about. Yeah. But I never saw one thing come to the top anywhere near them. That's no. why I, I'm thinking they come to the edge. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't know. I, I wouldn't like to say, but I would say what you've just said, yeah, I would say they come to the edge, yeah. Yeah, I would, I would say so. I've never seen one come up through the water. No. I've seen them on the water. Yeah, it seems like there was a lot about Alba Yeah. Well, I, I, uh, I, I use that quite a lot, to be fair. <laughs> um, I, I've used it a lot in the summer, this, this this summer for fish, that I've just tried everything and, put, and, and nothing, and I've put that on and caught with it. Mm. It's just, it just worked for me, so that's just my personal. Yeah. Thanks, Dan. No worries. Let's do that one. Tim, is um, Cape Cali uh, readily available, or have you got to search for it? I'm lucky that somebody brings some out from Sweden. Um, but I think you probably could get it off people, yeah? I wouldn't, I, I, I don't know whether Steve would have any. Cooper, I don't know. I wouldn't like to stay. Steve may have some. Would he, Paul? I wouldn't be surprised. I've got some, but there again, I've I got it sort of down the uh, grapevine. Yeah, I like it because it's. Uh, oh well, you can see. Look at the look at the fibres on it. Um, and it look it's, it makes a lovely wing case. It's quite nice. But um, Steve Steve might have some. He may have some if you ask Steve Cooper. Uh, the only other thing to do is ask some of the boys who's coming over for uh, the British Fly Fair or something like that. That's all I can say about that. Um, and it makes, I'll tell you what it does do, it's beautiful for a rib on a, a nymph or something like that. If you rib it, it looks beautiful on a rib. Um, right. I'm going to do an olive emerger. Well, I use this quite a lot as well. And I'll tie this in 16s, 18s, and this is a 14. I'll just tie it tonight because you can see it better. Olive thread. One thing. Let me just follow it. Hook is a Partridge K148 and it's um, an emerger hook. Olive thread. And I've got golden olive, the golden olive strip cup. So, olive thread. Tying at the eye. Take your thread to to 
probably four or five mil down uh, from the eye. And this is just Olive Antron. Some people probably have seen Matthias before. Get a dozen, ten or a dozen uh, fibres out of the Antron. Cut them level. The pinch loop tie one. I keep keep them on the top of the hook and just tie them in. And take it down around the bend to about there. Trim your waist off. And then I don't cut these uh, off straight. I hold them in my fingers and I'll cut some off there and just keep stagger the stagger them. And that's just the shook at the back. The next, we've got our golden olive strip quill. Black line facing downhill and towards you. And I've told everybody before, I soak them in water usually before I put them on because they go brittle. Tie that in while the tip. And then work your thread. Back up. Same again, I'll put a tiny bit of super glue. Oh dear. And then wind your hurl. Yeah, quill cool. again. Touching turns. Just work your way up to the eye. Steady. Take your time because they will break if you pull. Tie him off. Cut your waist. I'll tell that I'll tell everybody before. I ne I never put varnish on me uh, quill. Not on me dries anyway. I just think it spoils them and adds weight to them. So there's our body, there's our shook threads there. I see Steve's fetched a load today and he uh, pull from somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, by the hundredweight mile look of it. Yeah. I've just looked, there's no Kappa Daily advertiser, but you'd have to ring him. Yeah, he might have some, yeah. I'm sure I've heard him say before he's, he has got it. Well, if he hadn't, he'd get his son. He would get his son. And just sort through your feathers till you've got, I usually use three uh, CDC feathers. Line them up like so. And then wing the length of the hook. Like so. 
and then drop them on there. This is the only device. There are no other devices or contacts to drop them on. To drop them on this device, log in from your Alexa app by clicking on the chat icon in the bottom navigation bar. So you've tied your wing on now, like so. Don't cut the butts off. It's tied on. And this is a pine squirrel. You see? Take yourself some pine squirrel and dub on. Only do it lightly. Slide him up. And then through the middle where you've done that in the middle, uh, put your thread in the middle, wrap that, pull your wing back, and then between the eye and the wing, just put a few wraps there and it'll kick the wing up like so. And then again, a bit of, and not to remember not to cut the butts off until you've finished. And then we'll hold your wing back and we'll finish. Cut your thread off. And then hold your butts, just hold them up and cut them about two or three mil, like so. And that's an Oliver emerge. I, I use quite a lot, and I tie that in 16s, 18s, and 20s. But obviously, you just scale down everything with your CDC and everything else as a 20. That's one of my uh, go to olive emerges. Any questions? Billy, everybody's on mute, Tim. I'm listening. <laughs> Have you listening, Paul? Yep. Good. Couldn't say I'll be able to do them, but I'm listening. Hey, I'm sure you would. Simpler, simple flies. Simple. I wish I could get rid of this cold. You get it flushed through with some Guinness. <laughs> I hope I'm better by then. I've had mine three weeks now, Tim. Well, I'll, I'll probably have mine now, I'm sure you to be fair. <clears throat> Thanks for doing tonight, by the way. I know you're not feeling 100%. Uh, um, right, what we have to... Don't suck up to him, Derek. <laughs> Horribly. I do this on a 16 and a 14, but I'll do it on a 14 so everybody can see it a little bit better. This is a similar similar fly altogether. Just an olive. What I use is um olive thread behind the eye. Couple of wraps tied on. And then I've got moose mane. Yeah, and it makes a beautiful tail for, for a lot of the dries. Just grab yourself two fibers, line the tips up. The length of the tail you want, just lay it on the top of the hook. Pinch and tie it in. And then just keep it on, on the top of the hook. 
as you get down, if it looks a bit long, just pull it back. What well, that looks about right to me. When you get to the bend, I put my thumb underneath the tail, so it pushes up and opens. One figure of eight through there. We've got the tail, like so. And you don't want to put loads in because it, all it does is builds up the back end of the fly, and makes it look fat. So we've got our tail in, cut your fibres off there, your waist. And you can do these in olive, golden olive, or sometimes I do them in natural, but I'd use a golden olive to not. Strip peacock quill in golden olive. And then just bring your bring your thread up to about there. A bit of super glue. Like so. And then the same again, just bring your strip quill up. And just be careful not to catch it on the point of the hook because it will rip it. Just work your way up carefully. And get to there, tie him in. Cut your waist off. If I'm tying small flies, very small, like 20s, 18s, the piece there that I've wasted, I'll cut another point on it and tighten again, say so wasting it. But only if you do if you're doing small flies, you get away with it. So we got that there. And the same as we did with the needle fly. Just grab yourself a bit of dubbing. And on your tiny bit. It's only to make a ball just to build the to cut the the wing up. And then we're there. One. And it's just common sense. If you're tying a 14, you need three CDC. If you're tying 16, you need less. And if you're tying a smaller the fly, the less CDC. So there's two. There's three. I've got three CDC again, Mark. So we'll grab the clip. I'll put them in the clip again like that. We've took the stalk off. And then as again, I say if you get your needle, hold your thread tight with your thumb and finger and get your needle and just stroke it, it'll flatten the thread. And then you can split it quite easy. And, and somebody asked me today about does the shear thread split? And it splits easy, to be honest. Put your, your CDC in between the clip. Put 
and you'll notice that I try and put the smaller bit of the CDC near the eye first. You don't need to spin it loads at all once it's in it rolled. And then again, start at the ball, what you've put, and then just keep stroking back. Just tie it. And bring in your bit of varnish. Quick finish. <laughs> And if any of the fibers you've just got caught, just get a needle and just pick them out like so. I'll come out. Same again, turn them over. Straight off with everything underneath. And if you grab your wing, there's any long, just and that just I use that as an olive upright, and there's the tail. The tail looks good with the moose fibers. Can you see the tail? The wing. There's that. And that's what I use as an olive. And I say I tie that, I will tie that in 16s, 18s, and even 20s. And all you do is scale everything down. What's the uh, silk you're using, Tim, to uh, split? Um, I'm using sheer, sheer thread. It's... Oh, yeah, yeah. It splits nice. It, it's, it's quite fine as well for small flies. Get rid of some of this stuff. Jim, you, you saying about the uh, golden olive, when you're over in Ireland, just talk to Steve. Yeah. Ask, ask him about West of Ireland golden olive. He'll have a good laugh. West of Ireland golden olive. Yeah, because everybody over there knows about it, but nobody can tell you what it is. Ah. I will ask him. Everybody said the next floor. Oh, I'm going to put some of the CDC away before it's everywhere. How many people have shut the bag and it's not been sealed and it's gone pop? CDC. I think everybody should this next well most people will just sit this next floor I'm sure Paul said it Derek said it Adam said it oh, this is for the benefit of the people That I haven't seen it. That I haven't seen it, yeah. <laughs> right.
right. This is a shrimp pattern that I've used everywhere. I caught the fish every single place I've been. And it's a size 10 and 12. And I, I um, when we went to Bosnia this year, Chad come with us from um, a lad from who works in Mallon and Green on the weekend. And he couldn't catch a fish on it. And he, he was using size 14s. And I've never caught much on 14, but 10s and 12s I have. Don't ask me why, but there's the hook. Is a grab cube, right? Uh, orange thread, vanyard sticky lead. Has anybody not seen this? Brit's got her hand up, B. Timo, she hasn't seen it. Britt's got her good hand up. She hasn't seen <laughs> it. Right, the sticky lead, and close your eyes while I do this, I cut with my scissors into two mil strips. Tim, I'll let Britt know ahead of time that this works in the States because I've used it. Did you? Yeah, I used it last year on the Spring Creek. Caught some dandy little browns on it. Yep. Good man. Works great. Works brilliant. So you stick your lead down, just put, down the bend of the hook, put your finger on, hold it with your nail, and then touch and turn, bring your lead to the eye yep cut your lead off then come in a couple of mil do exactly the same again touching turns bring it up and just stop short again and obviously if you're doing 12s you do less lead if you're doing 14, some people you need less lead again. And then you come up a couple of mil again and use the same again. So you build a little bit of a body, put some weight on your fly. I use this on a dropout, and 90% of the time, if I'm on the dove or um, the wire or somewhere like that, or in Bosnia or anywhere like that, I used it as a single fly. Then we've got orange thread. We start at the eye, tie in. And you're not trying to cover the lead, but just, and then cut your waist off. And just take it down to where you started with the lead, just beyond where you start with the lead, and then bring it back to the middle. And then the next thing is just any old tippet you've got. This is just normal tippet. I'll just put the end in between my teeth and just flatten it a little bit just to stop it pulling out. And then I'll tie that in underneath the fly now. So you tie it in and just keep your, your, your tip it as you work your way down to the bend just underneath the hook. So there, we're there, and then we bring the tip it, uh, the thread back to where we started with the tip it. Does anybody see my little get on? Oh, no. If I put that there, look, my little gadget that I had from Van Yards, and it's just to hold you. It's a little magnet with a little vein. It's a lovely little thing. So we we then we've got 
And I found the best one I could find on the market was the Magic Shrimp, shrimp Fall Off from Yanchi Man. It's awesome. They do it in all colours. Uh, cinnamon, orange, white, uh, blue, pink. And then on, on you've got a shiny side and a dull side. At the moment, I'll get the end and I'll cut a small point. And then the shiny side, personally, I'll face uphill. So I'm tying it in with the shiny side facing uphill. So when we pull it over, it'll be the dull side. Right there. Tie it in where I've tied like so. And then put your finger and just a bit of tension. And then bring your thread. Just lift it up if you're not sure where it, where it, whether it's covered it, and then it's covered everything there. So that we're there then. Dubbing. I mix myself. It's an ice blue and an orange. And that's how it's come out on this blend. And then just take some of your dubbing and don't dub it on like you don't need it to be tight at all. So you just put like so. You can add a bit more if you need it. And then don't pull it and twist it tight, just loose wraps. I'm just going to add a little bit more. Just to get us to the eye. And you see how it's all covered the eye there? I'll just wet your fingers. Pull all the fibres back. There. Yeah. And then, once you've got it on the top of the hook, just pull it tight. Pull your thread over. It's locked in there. And then one, two, three. And then just be careful, cut it off, and then just do yourself a couple of whip finishes there. That's the first thing Derek learnt me, was to finish, whip finish with my hand. Remember that, Deck? I do, Tim. <laughs> Oh, what's happened there? What have I done here? You do it for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and then you tip it. Bring your tip it round. I'll put one full turn underneath the, the, the um, shell back. And then come up with open turns. Keep nicely spaced. Don't worry about catching fibres at the moment. And then when you get to the eye, over, to, and then it's locked in. We swap hands and then come up to the eye and then I'll, I'll pull my tip it back then towards the back of the hook so it's doubly, doubled, doubly tied in. And then build your head up. Cut your tip it off. And then just build your nice head. What you think the proportion should be for the head. If your shell back's moved around a bit, just push it back. Don't be frightened. 
and then one, two, three. Cut your thread off. Right, then Adam's going to laugh at this. <laughs> this is some of Lawrence Finney's UV resin, and I've still got it, and it's still as good today. <laughs> Everybody asks me, I never put it on the shell back, only on the head. Just put the torch on that for a minute. There's a couple of fibers there. Just pull them out. And then we're after. Pop find it. Got it. I've got a brush here and I'll just brush, rough him up a bit. And then get your scissors and just arch them up to the point of the hook. And there we are. And that's an orange shrimp. And I've caught fish everywhere, every morsel place. I've been fishing, I've caught with that. I use that on a dropper or as a single shrimp. What's the orange dubbing used? Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Pardon? What's what's the orange dubbing you mixed with the, the ice blue? Right. I will show you. Let me fold down. It is. It is. I'll tell you what my number is if I can find it. I've got the one. Right. It's Hens Micro Flash Dubbing, and it's number 12. Well, actually, I think that's 12. It's either 72 or 12. I can't even. Can anybody see that? It's hard to say which one it is, but that's yeah. that's the one. It's either 72 or 12. I think it's number 12. And then the UV ice dubbing is number, definitely number 98, which is that one. Okay. And I'll put, I put half and half and just put them in a blend, uh, coffee grinder and just blend them. And it comes out like where the fuck could he? I just ask it, it looks more natural than a, a synthetic fiber. Pardon? It it looks more um, natural than a synthetic fiber, or is it just the, the light? No, it's it's probably a light, it's it is definitely synthetic here. Yeah. Okay, all right. Thanks. Yeah. There's a light on it, it doesn't do it justice. No. Probably. Didn't you do a step by step for that in the fly dresses? Uh, yeah, fly fishing and fly tying magazine, Tim. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's um, a Stu Fox did an article in fly uh, trout and salmon on that. Yes, you. Um, yes, you done an article on Tim trout and salmon. Okay, I love a search. Thanks. If you look in trout, it's definitely in trout and salmon. Or um, did I do? 
I think I have done the one in, Flo in uh, the Fly Dressers Guild as well. I'm sure there was, yeah. It's a good little shrimp, that is. Yeah, it's been brilliant for me, honestly. Awesome. They all laughed at me when I told that in Bosnia. They said it would never work. Right, that's that. <laughs> that. Right. What time is it, Dick? Just gone eight o'clock, Tim. <sighs> if you've had enough, kid, call it a night. I know you're not feeling hundred percent. I'll do. I'm going to do this one. Then I've got this one off, didn't I? Right, the next one is a partridge sure old jig hook and a 16. We've got a matte black jig off bead. The voice. There's our hook. There's our bead. Some tight. They, these are quite tight on a, on a normal jig hook because the jig offs have got. You can use a different jig up a jig, uh, jig hook, which the eye goes the opposite way to what it does on that one. So the eye goes the opposite way to that one. I usually super glue the, the beads on, but I'm not going to because they're quite tight on that, to be honest. Are they from Ian? Um, no, there's that, they're from the same. I'll take them off semi from Fastnet. But yeah, I've got orange thread, and we'll tie him behind there. You can't actually. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, hang on. I'll tie it in with um, black and then I'll change to orange. Now that they're they're off um, they're off semi from Fasner, but I think they're from the same place, I think. The smallest you can get in them, Tim, is two point eight, isn't it? No. Um uh, two point three. Is there oh. two point three is quite tiny to be fair. I don't know whether you can see that. That's a two point three. So you can see the difference. Yeah, two point I think two point two point three is the smallest. And I have got some three point threes. I quite like them, to be honest. So we'll start behind the bead with a, a black thread. Cut your waist off. That's... Um, we're a cock de leon feather for the tail I'll just pull off the waist I tend to take a few more fibres than you should off because 
I like them nice and stiff. And then pull yourself off six or eight fibres. Line the tips up. And I just line the tips up and then pull them. Wet them so they all stick together. Line it up on the top of your hook. Pinch. Tie in. And then just check your tail. If it's a bit long, pull it back. If it's a bit short, pull it back. That's about right. And then just tie in down to the bend. And you'll tell when it starts to drop around the bend. The tail, if, so if I went past, look, it starts curling the tail down. So we'll come back. And then one underneath just to kick the tail up. And there we are. Tail's in. There's one really long one. Not the fish matters, but I'll just pull it out. And that's that. So then, cut your waist off. And then, fine copper wire. It's very fine. If you took the end in the hole of the bead, actually, I'll bring my thread back up to the top and then tie your copper wire in. So I've tied it in nearer the camera, the wire. And then just take your thread down to the bend, bend where the tail is. So there's a copper wire. And then I had this off Matt Charles. He sent it up for me to play about with, and it's a um, Cock de Leon. And I think it's a tail feather, if you look. The tail, tail feathers is here. There's the Cock de Leon's up here. Um, and what I did, I thought, I wonder if that fibres off the tail will make a, a, a good body. So there's one of the tail feathers. And I'll take about two or three earls and I'll tie them in with the dull side facing me, shiny side facing the camera. So we've tied them in. Bring your thread up. And then I'll just build the body. Up with some thread. And you can tie these in all sizes, 20s. I'll tie them in 20. All you do is scale your beads down. Obviously. And then we, we got that shape there. Get in. Get your aqua pliers. And just take your time, see, because you'll break them if not. And then open turns, and the and the feather is speckled. And 
and then just tie that off beyond the bead. Cut your waist off. Get your wire. And then just rib with open turns. Probably five, four or five wraps. And then break your wire off. And there's that. And then for the collar, got some bright orange dubbing. And this is this is dubbed on tight. And then bring up your to the back of the bead and then got the hens number 12 Tim deck I don't know where it's from it's in the pack <laughs> I don't know it, it's similar to that though it is, it is very very close to number 12 yeah a bit too much on there, Vic. I'm going to take that back off. Pull a bit off. It is similar to that that, that one, but it, it's not, but it is. I do use that one. I try and keep the collar quite tight around the back of the bead. And if you want to, you could change some orange thread to tie that off if you want to, but it don't really matter. <laughs> and then we'll whip finish. And there we are. You so say you could tie that in a 16, 18, 20. I tend to use a lot of small flies. Well, in clear water, I'll use a lot of small flies. I think uh, when it's like this, if the water's really clear, I'll use uh, the smaller flies I can. And 99% of the time, I'll always have my shrimp on the dropper. Or, as I say, if it's low and clear, I'll use the shrimp. Um, on the point with nothing else. Yeah. Any questions? <coughs> Thanks for tonight, Tim. Hey, welcome, mate. I feel sh oh. <laughs> SH1T. You what, mate? SH1T. Yeah. SH1T. <laughs> Oh. What you need, Tim, my friend, is one of these. Well, oh, mate, <laughs> you're right. I've been sitting here <laughs> logging in. See that um, nymph you just did there? When yeah. you, you come up with the um, herald body, yeah? Yeah. yeah. See if you use any of that brush coat for, 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 for Phil, the Venier's brush coat stuff, just in the thread first, would that not help in case it, the herald breaks? Yeah, you could do if you want to. Yeah, I'll just put the wire around. Sometimes I'll put glue, uh, super glue on. Sometimes I will uh, just do them natural. It depends what I'm tying. Uh, I'll have to be fair. But did you take that, um, that your copper rub the opposite direction? Then? Did I take? I always take mine. Um, the oil goes that way, and the copper goes that, this way. Yeah. Aye. aye. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll put me, yeah, my oil come back, yeah, my oil's that way, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you keeping on all right anyway? Better than you, by the looks of it. <laughs> I feel terrible, mate, honestly. Yeah.
Well, if it's any constellation, Tim, you look terrible as well, but no matter. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, what was I going to say, I spoke to Daryl today. I said, I uh, sent you a message, see if you was all right. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I haven't sent yeah, you. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, I spoke to him today as well. Yeah, so, so. Yeah. I haven't sent you the flight times, have I yet? No, but Selena will do that. Selena will send them to you. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think, I Sorry. think. I think it's something like nine something do we land at, not half nine, ten o'clock or something like that. What time do you land? Yeah, just before that. Ah, uh, that, that's it, yeah. yeah. I'll see you You'll find me at Starbucks. I'll be full of coffee, yeah. Yeah. 